welcome to another mailbag. Wow, <laughs> <episode>. another one. <laughs> yeah, I'm choking on these emails. There's so many of them. <laughs> I've had a lot, a lot of emails in the last couple of weeks. What um, is the general tone of said emails? Angry Australians. Jesus, okay. Okay. <laughs> Would you like an example? Yes, please. Um, I, I, just, right. just dipping in. Uh, <laughs> this is subject line, uh, Triforce Australia the Hellhole, all caps. Right, sure. <laughs> now, okay, uh, I need some context. What did we talk about so in that? So, last mailbag, or it might have been just a regular Triforce, I can't remember. Um, you were talking about going to Australia, and I said I would never go. And I said I didn't even think that it was meant to be inhabited by human beings. It was so inhospitable a terrain, so little of it that you could actually live in or farm in or do anything with, and that you may as well be living on the moon, and that there are too many horrifying, terrifying creatures living there. Sure, um, yes. That was the gist of it. So, so the Australian Tourist Board obviously were like, no, mate, no, it's mate, real it nice over here. couldn't be more wrong, actually. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I did watch last um, Stop Larimer, by the way. I don't know if we talked about it on this podcast. It's like a documentary about um, this little shit town in, in bumfuck nowhere in Australia on, on one of these north-south roads where, you know, it's, it's, it used to be a stop-off for people to refuel, but mm -hmm. now with, with big fuel tanks, no one stops there. And it's got like 10 people left living there. And they're all like Tiger King level of mad insanity. You know, they're all super weird people. Yeah. And... Um, they all hate each other, it turns out, these 10 people who live in the middle of fucking nowhere. Yeah. And one of them disappeared. And it's this whole mystery over who who killed him. He went missing. Everyone hated him. But any of us could have killed him. I could have killed him. Do you know what I mean? They're all fucking... It's honestly really, really worth a watch. Um, and it honestly, like, quite endearing. Uh, so didn't make me want to go to there. Australia, though. Yeah. Got to admit. Um, well, well, this might not either. This is from Sam. I visited Brisbane, Australia, for a month about a decade ago. Brisbane, and you mean? Brisbane, sure. Brisbane. Uh, and just before I went there was a huge rain, which caused the river to burst its banks. This meant that the bull sharks, which swim up the river from the ocean, were spotted on multiple occasions swimming in the streets. It's not just the land-based killers you have to worry about in the city. <laughs> wow. That's great. Bull sharks swimming in the streets. Yeah. That is, that is so that, that I love was that. a Brit saying, yeah, you're right. Here's one from an Aussie. Uh, that's how it's been signed. And it's simply titled Australia Greater Than Britain. Period. Okay. Why are you so right. salty about the existence of Australia? Inventing reasons to not visit. Uh, I, so again, I'm not salty about the existence of a continent or subcontinent. Period. Why, are you, so Why are you so salty? salty about the existence of Australia, mate? Invent reasons not to visit? It takes too long. Bro, my ancestors spent months on a sailing ship to come here from Britain, but you can't do 24 hours? Just because your ancestors didn't make the trip doesn't mean you can be that salty. I'm not, again, I'm not salty. <laughs> I just don't want to fucking go. If I'd been, if I'd been and, it was, and said I don't want to go back, it was awful, you could call me salty. This is not salt. Again, you guys don't understand the fucking words you're using. Maybe language didn't make it down under yet. That's wow. not salty. I don't want to fucking go. All right? That's not salt. That's reluctance. Everything is we're trying to really kill you. We're really starting off this, this podcast They've with They come some at rage. me hard, and they're very rude. Everything is trying to kill you. <laughs> just because every square inch of Britain is either suburban sprawl, cleared farmland, or managed parkland, doesn't mean you can be nasty to the humble huntsman spider. See, again, he's trying to defend the huntsman. Seriously. <laughs> no, I think that's sarcastic, no, right? even the natural parts of Britain are fake and managed. The natural parts of Australia are actually natural. Australia is a land of potential. Australia is just Britain, but further down the culture and tech trees. You can stay on your miserable grey island with a rotting economy and street gangs increasingly taking over the dull townhouse corpses of the outer suburbs. Or you can Jeez. come for a visit with Lulu and Sips and see what sunshine on a proper beach is like. You cannot be miserable on the beach. It's just fact. You should try it. That's this typical is, of the sort of true. email I've had. It's true. First of all, it's very easy to be measurable on a beach. Again, you get there. If you're not the kind of person who, quite frankly, is dull-minded and can spend eight hours just sitting and staring at nothing, <laughs> I'm sure the beach is great fun. Right, no, okay. Uh, I imagine, like, do you know what I think is going to happen? You're going to land on the beach in Australia and they're going to tell because you're going to have, like, the pheromones or whatever that are, like, oh, I hate this. Like, you know, and the spiders are going to be drawn to it. No, you know? I don't think there are spiders on the beach. you're going to get instantly killed. I think the only people who've been left in Australia are the people who are recklessly optimistic and, you know, positive. 
in my experience, you know, Australians very upbeat folks, you know, nice folks. N- well, judging by these emails, Lewis, beneath the surface of that. All the grumpy grouch people stayed back in England. No, know? I'm telling you that the opposite is true. They are at just... war with each other as well. Do you oh, know how right. many of these emails I've had saying Melbourne is better than Sydney? Sydney is better than Melbourne. Fuck Brisbane. All of this, literally every single one well, of them. Well, they're all so far apart. They've never yeah. visited each other's it cities. It might as well just I mean. be in different countries. They're so far apart. Exactly. Mm-hmm. It takes They're 15 all in hours different to time zones anywhere. and everything. Like, it's crazy. They got like six time zones in uh, Australia. So, what is another one of these ones? I'm not going to read all of them because there's so many. Um, saying that me saying it's too far is silly because I went to it, Singapore. I was really, paid to go to it Singapore. Is far. It is I far. was there for work. It is I really was, far. It's hard they to... paid for the flights and I was paid money for being there. Is I'm it not easier to get to from LA? How how far is it to fly from LA to. Uh, to... It's, it's still very it's, it's far. It's still very far. You yeah. have to cross the Atlantic, the, the Pacific Ocean. Sorry, like it, it's very far. It's like half the world away. Yeah. So it's I mean, miles. if you if you go to Google Maps and zoom out, right, you yeah. go all the way down there. There's Australia, right? So you'd have to fly over the whole of Europe, the whole of the Middle East. You'd be over the Indian Ocean. You'd get to Australia if that was the route you took. I don't know what. Route L.A. You'd take. to Australia. It's about time. it comes the up same straight away. It is. Uh, how long is a flight to L? From LA to Australia, 15 hours Mm -hmm. and 14 minutes. Oh my God. On top of already, was it like 11, 12 hours for us to get to LA? It's about 10, yeah. It's about 10, 10, 10 and a half. Well, there's a direct flight from the UK to West Australia. Yeah. You could Um, go to, and then then you'd you'd have have to go across Australia, which is the equivalent to going across the whole of Europe and then some. It's yeah. fucking huge. Um, so yes, it's it's a long way. This okay. this is more like it. This is more like the kind of email. This this one was the best one I received this week for right. multiple reasons. This I'm do- is I'm doing this. Return. You're doing fare. what? I I'm going to book us three flights from Heathrow to Australia. Is that you and your family? No, us <laughs> us three. I'm doing it right so now. So one of those tickets isn't getting used. If anyone wants a from free ticket to Australia. Heathrow, no, no, I just want to see how much it costs. On This is on British Airways, okay? Oh, this is going to be like uh, t- 10 grand. Sydney, Nova Scotia? Oh, it's no, not. Sydney, you want Sydney, Kingsford, Smith, Australia. Yeah? Sure. For three Seven. adults. Uh, <laughs> travel class economy? Yeah? Sure. I mean, yeah, sure. We'll, we'll just die. That's fine. When do you want to go? <laughs> I don't. I'm saying let's go in March. <laughs> okay. March 13th. Um, and we're going to go for a Two week. weeks. Two, Two weeks. weeks. Okay, we're going to come back on the 27th of March. Yeah. Right. I'm finding flights right now. Let's put this one to bed, boys. All three right. flights. Okay. Economy flights for three of us. Um, it would take us two days to get there. Yeah. Uh, flight details, let me tell you. From London to Sydney, we would leave London Heathrow at 9.50 at night, which is really depressing. That's quite late. Uh, and we would arrive, uh, we would leave on Wednesday, the 13th of March, and we would arrive in Sydney at Terminal 1 on Friday, the 15th of March at 6.55 a.m. Yeah, so you spend okay. a full It's day. a 22-hour flight with yeah. one stopover in Changi Airport. That's in Singapore. That's Changi Airport. That's an amazing airport. That's where right. we're visiting. Okay, so... We, that uh, could be our guys, first Okay, our first you guys visit. want... That's a direct flight. We're going to take that one. It's not direct, And we're flying it? economy, it, that, right? That's not direct, but yes, go Three on. Three of us... Okay, well, it's saying it's listing as direct, Okay. <laughs> okay. Which is a Three line, of us flying sure. basic economy. This is uh, hand baggage only, allocated seats or pay to choose any time, complimentary meals and drinks, and seat back power and on demand entertainment. Oh, Sounds all good. Right. And, 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 the, and the price God. is okay. And uh, this that was just for going there. Okay? <laughs> and the price <laughs> is. I'm I'm going to tell you in a minute. Oh, yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. looking at the flights back now. Edging us so bad. Okay, flight details. So from Sydney to London. London. Yes. We would leave at 4:30 p.m. Uh, Sydney time uh, on the 27th <laughs> of March, Why? Why and we wouldn't get so back long? until the 28th of March at 5:25 in the morning. Yes, fine, fine. Heathrow, How much? Okay? 23 hours. You want to take that one? Economy again? Yes. Okay. For all three of us to fly there 
direct economy, it's going to cost somebody, and probably not me, five grand. Okay, five grand. Well, that's not too bad. That's fucking dreadful. Five thousand pounds. Five thousand pounds. Just that's just flights. We get, we're staying there for two weeks. We'd need hotels or like a some sort of hostel or maybe like a camping ground or something. I wouldn't I'm camp. Not camping. I'm in not Australia. camping there. They got huntsman spiders out there. Yeah. There's no way I'm going out there in the in the outback. I'd need at least a hotel. At so least. Here's, here's an email. This is from Neve. Triforce. Hot girl hopes to convince Perian to come to Australia. This is the closest, <laughs> is the closest I'm, we've I'm on come. The way. This is the closest we've come to a yes. Uh, Long like time hot, listener. It's like, it, like hot as in uh, it's, hot? it's summer she, over she's there, hot. she's boiling? <laughs> no, no, she, she's very hot. Oh. Uh, Long time summer. listener, first time emailer. Big fan of the podcast. You guys have kept me company during some of the most challenging moments of my life and I'm beyond grateful. You're welcome. As a British Australian, I was sad to hear you say you'd never come to Australia. After listening and re-listening to the podcast for years, I'm now confident I am just your type. Buxom, thighs that could crush a man, thick dark hair that falls to my ass, five foot six, and and so on. As such, I was hoping if anyone could soften you up to visit us here down under, I was hoping it would be a hot buxom woman. Listen, you're close. It's still not enough. I'm sorry. You're you're very hot, but it's not it's not enough. We've Reason seen Flax's search uh, history and recommendations. <laughs> True. I don't I think Buxom it, yeah. Buxom does not cover it. You need to be they're, they're, well, no Buxom is fine. They're, 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 it's a spectrum. Be, it's, it's like spectrum. Buxom plus plus for Flax. I think. I, I'll based take, on what I, I've I'm seen. just saying that you know I, I don't I'm not a, a one one type kind of guy. I like I like all kinds of ladies, but obviously she is essentially describing my ideal type. Even Australian ladies. Yeah, that's I have no problem. With Australian ladies. Oh no, she said she's British. She's Australian. British Australian. So reasons you should come to Australia. And What's this is the... interesting because every single Aussie that's emailed in has had a fucking caveat in their email. Okay. And this is an example. If you respect the wildlife, it will respect you. Brackets, unless it's a crocodile, they're murderous bastards. Stay away. <laughs> that's what I'm talking about. Yeah. That is what I'm talking about. Is that it always comes with a caveat. Like, oh yeah, mate, there's no animals in Sydney. It's like, so you want me to travel all the way to Australia just to be in a city? Like, I, I don't I see how Sydney or Melbourne could be so fucking good that I will fly for a day at the cost of thousands of pounds just to be in another city. So right. what you're really selling is the nature and the wildlife of Australia, which means I will have to go out and face my fears of I think the crocodiles, all... sharks, box jellyfish, more sharks, sharks in the fucking river, spiders jumping out at me, God knows what else. God it, knows what else. Snakes, it, spiders, snakes, snakes, spiders, and sharks. In my experience, the only British people that move to Australia are on that TV show, the location, location, down under or whatever. Or what, what's the name of that show? The one where they have to choose whether they want to stay in Britain or make the move to Australia. Oh, it's like yes. it's on daytime TV. Um, and I think they're usually looking to run away. And make they the never life, sell any of this stuff you know? to them either when they're down there. They're like, it's close to schools. It's close. It's it's probably a bit more of a commute than you're used to. So you'd have to weigh up whether you can afford to buy this property and get your ass to work mm -hmm. and stuff like that. You know, they never talk about the wildlife. They never talk about even being outside. They just say like it's close to school. Sometimes they say it's close to a beach, but they don't actually talk about going to a beach or being on a beach in any yeah. capacity. It's 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 really like uh, it's like the tangible stuff, you know. Yeah. So I don't know where I was going with this, but no, that's fine. Uh, <laughs> I just thought I'd mention it. You know? We don't know where we're going with any of this no. at any point. So uh, yeah, so thank you, Australians, for all your many really offensive emails. There's a lot of them I didn't read out. People were just calling me a cunt and uh, and it's telling me I was wrong. It's expensive for. It's not only expensive for us to go there, but it's really time consuming as well. And it takes, we're old. It takes a long time, uh, that long on a flight. That's a Even Lewis is old now. We're all in the in the 40 plus club now. Before yeah. Lewis might have with his youth might have been able to carry us there or whatever, but now we're all old officially. So we can't go. I'm sorry. You want, you want me to go to the beach where you can't go in the water because you'll get killed by something? You want me to go and enjoy the nature where you can't go there because you get killed that, by something? Not just that, but if I'm in the sun too long, I'm like a tomato. I just yeah, exactly. Go, I don't even enjoy it. I get all hot and sweaty and I burn immediately. And I'm the just, heat I'm out not, there, dude. I'm not built to be outside, unfortunately. I volunteer. <laughs> You've already been, You've been you before. I know, but I volunteer again. Give me this woman's number. <laughs> <laughs> Look, the only, I'll take one for the team. The only way I'll go is, is if we fly from France and we take a train there together first. 
Oh, I'm not ooh. going. We'll fly ooh. from Paris, okay? No. It might be how shorter. We just, how we train the whole world? <laughs> no, I'll, take do, an hour I'll, off the I'll do the train thing. I'll do the train thing to France. That sounds lovely. But I will not. And you can mark me down. Wanna, put this on my gravestone. You want to Michael Portillo it, though? Like, you want to no, go on? Okay. He will never go. Pyrian Flag. Rest in peace, Pyrian Flags. He never went to Australia, and he never will, even in death. And, and he I never will, will, will go on a train with Michael Portillo, either? Not across. with Portillo. I'll go on a train with you, lads, but not with Portillo. You not don't want to go Portillo. on with Portillo? What if he's no. got a lot of factoids to share with you? Like, uh, yeah, really that's interesting That's one of the ones. reasons I don't want to go on a fucking train with he'd Portillo. Be wearing, he'd probably be wearing some, like, red jeans and, and maybe a blazer. A shirt, yeah. Yeah. Hello, I'm Michael Portillo. Welcome. <laughs> We're taking a train ride today. Oh, isn't that fun? Jolly good fun. <laughs> Tell me, you drive the train, don't you? He does that awkward thing where he tries to lean and look casual and talk to a working class person. He's trying doing to a talk job. to the everyday men and yeah. women, yeah. Ha 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 ha, good joke. Ha ha ha, plebeians, I've arrived. <laughs> Portillo's here. Uh, Portillo. Uh, this is a change of subject. A Britney Spears stan's response to your slander. I think that is like a big fan, a stan. So just in case anyone doesn't know that. A stan. Hi, Perrin, a stan. Long time listener, first time writer. This had to change once I listened to the most recent mailbag episode where you slander Britney. Let me clear some things up for you. Mainly, her career, you said, died after four years. Did I say four years? Maybe sure. One More Time came out in 99. Oops, I did it again, 2000. Britney in 2001. And then In The Zone came out in 2003. That's a four-year career. There is then a four-year gap before Blackout, okay? I'm just saying, if your career is at its peak, you ain't waiting four years for another album. Anyway, uh, Britney's a cultural icon and is wholly credited for many, by many, for reviving teen pop. Okay. You all said you know the song Toxic from her In The Zone album. Here are some more which you will 100% have heard of. Gimme More from Blackout, which is the one that starts with It's Britney Bitch. So that was the one that came out in 2007. Right. I think that's the only song that I could know from that album. Circus and Womanizer from the album Circus. Don't know either of those songs. No, me neither. Criminal no. from Femme Fatale. Don't Criminal. know that song. Don't um, know that one. Work, so work bitch oh, that's an from Britney Jean. Oh, work bitch, I know that one. Well, I, I only know, know that because of Simon. So I only yeah. know because of work, Simon bitch. as well, yeah. Right, so <laughs> after Britney Jean in 2013, her career does admittedly die, but this is mainly due to her conservatorship. Again, not having a fucking pop at Britney, Britney stands, or I'm not having a go at on the telling she wasn't trying hard enough, just saying that if you're comparing her heyday to the fact that I might know one song from an album that came mm. out a few years later with her at her peak, she'd been overtaken. You guys are going to be thrilled when I tell you I actually have some up-to-date relevant Britney verse news to share with you and Do it's it. uh, based oh off of God. a uh, something that we discussed on a previous episode we were talking about I'm a celebrity get me out of here and uh -huh. Jamie Lynn Spears is of course one of the contestants Britney's yes. young, younger sister uh, and I predicted that she would leave because everything I've seen her on she quits because she misses her kids too much. Guess who fucking quit? I'm a celebrity. <laughs> get me out of here. Yesterday, because she misses her kids too much. Wow. That's yep. pathetic. Fucking dumb. That's pathetic. Yeah. Honestly, get a fucking grip. You've got a job to do. Get on with it. Get on with it, for fuck's sake. Look, the Spears are a bunch of quitters. Let hear me out, Spears fans. Oh, my wow. God. Her sister quits. Britney fucking quit. She Britney, had a career. I don't know if she Britney quit. quit. I don't know if she quit. Oh, she quit. But at some point, I feel like she might have had meth. Leave Britney alone! <laughs> she might have had meth teeth at one point, though, because yeah, her teeth are fucked right now. I tell you, I don't know what has happened, but they are all over the damn place. This is somebody who's had perfect uh, teeth her whole life, it looks like, except for in the last year. Like, How does this happen to somebody? I don't know. Um, stay tuned though. We'll 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 figure it stay out. We'll, we'll find out. Someone write in. I'm sure. Listen, listen, Brittany. Perrin, you're getting it in the neck today, and I want to say I feel great about that. I know you do. It's you know, normally you. It's not, and this is such I a don't relief feel like it to is do a podcast you. I think where you're on the back. Is foot. normally flax. Who is it's getting not normally flax? He, I do get he, a lot of shit, but I also seems, talk a lot of shit. He seems to bring out the worst in. Mailers in. Oh, the Joe, the Joe, point what? is, I speak the truth, and the idiots out there that email in and try to correct me uh, look like fools. Um, and you know, I'm sorry, but uh, I'm unapologetic. <laughs> in in this saying, sounds like one of say. Trump's speeches. It does. It does. Look, I'm just saying. I'll fall, I'll fall gonna, on hey, that hey, sword. Hey, hey, there's a real if, fucking song for you, Britney fans. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> if you want me to 
come out to a Britney concert with you. And, in Australia, you know, yeah. G- give Lulu a let call. Let me know. Uh, I will fall on that sword. I'll be watching you. Taylor Swift in the UK, <laughs> a superior country and a superior artist. Next. <laughs> okay. Uh, here's another fucking Australia email. This is pretty much all we've had this week. Do do um do do Spearomaniacs and Swifties get get along? No, I don't think they do. Oh, oh right, God, okay. The different generations. One of them is ten years. Older and much angrier. And very successful. What do, what the, do the, Britney the, Spears the fans call themselves? Losers. This <laughs> 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 oh, uh, This one is titled Period and Don't Be a Coward. <laughs> Just okay. listen to the latest. See what I mean? Every fucking <laughs> mail. <laughs> where Flack said he would never set foot in Australia. For reasons that were weak, to be honest. All I heard was that you were afraid of animals. I've been here I 11 you years. Were kind, I, I assumed you always have been kind of half joking about this, though, right? You're not f- super serious about actually being scared. I think of they're pushing him right? into being serious, though. I no, think the no, reactions. I, 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 you, you can't back me into a corner. I either have an opinion or I don't. What I'll be honest with you is I, I genuinely don't like the idea of being somewhere where I have to be careful all the time about what me, might be under a pillow or in my shoe or under the toilet seat or that there might be a snake that bites me. And they're all emailing in saying things like, nobody's died, period. We've got anti-venom. It's fine, mate. No one was died of a spider bite since 1978. All this stuff. I don't care. The trauma of being bitten by an insect would be so horrifying that it would it would genuinely chill me to the bone. Now, I love the way that nowadays, apparently, people's fears and feelings and how they feel, we've all got to be very careful. But I say that I'm scared of going to Australia because I don't like the idea of the horrifying wildlife. And all I get is venom. The actual kind of, of venom is really scary to me. The venom that you're emailing me in with, I don't give a fuck, all right? It's like water off a bull shark's back. I don't care. Keep emailing. Right. While he's I'm not in going. the city I don't as well. fucking care. Interesting. I feel like... I kind of don't believe you a little bit though, like in my in my heart of hearts. I think Pyrian, you're a big old softy, and we could, you know, if we got you in a five star resort, and we said, "Don't worry, we're not going to go camping. We're just going to drive How around." How are you going to get Land me there? You have to drug me very, very, very successfully. Well, that's the thing. The journey is. I mean, I only I only had like a four hour flight to the for, to the Canary Islands, and I don't travel well. I get like fucking car sick in the right. taxi on the way to the airport. I like get like all stressed out and like anxious with all the people around going through security and all that bothers me and then on the plane it's really noisy and my fucking sinuses all like swell up and i get this like air pressure thing where i all my i get this terrible like headache and it doesn't even go away and so i got, got don't to get, get to me place. started on the diarrhea <laughs> <laughs> the airflow Blowing food freely. sets my ass off <laughs> yeah like I'm just like <laughs> It's a fuck. I'm just I'm an absolute wreck by the time I get yeah, there. Yeah, I, like I don't a like short traveling. Flight. I don't like, like traveling. Yeah, traveling is uh, just fucking the worst. Like when I honestly. have to go away for for dope events or something, the the worst part is traveling. The actual journey. Being there, it's, fuck, I love it. I yeah, love it. I don't mind when get, I'm once I'm there. Wrong, but... You know, I get on with a job. I generally pretty much everywhere I've traveled, I've, I've been pretty happy there. I've and enjoyed I don't, it. I don't mind being the driver. It's just being the drivee. Yeah. Is, is 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 you know just my big you know me. what my big gripe is nowadays when did when did Club Europe stop being so exclusive? Because every time I go into the <laughs> business lounge, <laughs> I can't even keep a when straight When did they place. stop doing those lovely little sausages in the business lounge? That they really just bothers let anybody me. In here. There's a guy in here who's not even wearing a goddamn suit. <laughs> oh man, so true though, so true. Fuck. All right, I got an email for you, Sips. Oh, this for is me? Okay. this is an this is almost a ten year old callback okay, Ooh, okay. is Sips it is getting... it angry in tone no oh no okay great just writing in wondering if sips ever elaborated on his experience of getting robbed at Peppa pig world so Damn. in 2014 you you tweeted to whomever just robbed me earlier at Peppa pig world i salute <laughs> you that took some major balls <laughs> that's a pretty right. good tweet actually i so, was not yeah. robbed at Peppa pig world i think i you just were- Tweeted, uh, tweeted because I thought that that would sound funny, and uh, now hearing it back, I th- that's a long lost and forgotten tweet. It's not bad. It's not a bad. So one. you were never robbed at Peppa Pig World. No, never, never. That's funny. Oh, that's a relief. Yeah, then that yeah. is just oh. a funny email. I, like I was kind of robbed oh. in Paris one time, though. I was telling right. people this story recently, and. People seem to feel really sorry for me as well, but it was not. It's not a. It's not a like a tale of woe. 
It's uh, it was just uh, one of those guys that tries to sell you a bracelet for twenty bucks, and mm. uh, it's not worth twenty bucks. But he just holds your wrist very firmly until you give him twenty bucks. Yeah, oh. and that happened yeah, that to sucked. that happened to me and my wife, and we were like, well. That sucks, but at least we're alive, I guess. And yeah. We just God, carried that on. Scary. Yeah. That's like being bitten by a spider, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> a little bit. Please yeah. don't bring it up again. Um, here's another email for you, Sips. Disneyland scalpers. Oh, oh um, yeah, it's okay. Here we go. This is from Joe. Yes. This one's for Sips. Earlier this year, I bought tickets from a scalper outside Disneyland Fucking Paris. Fucking hell. No, I am sadly not a billionaire. My wife and I were camping away in the north of France when coming up with stuff to do, realized it was only a couple of hours to Disneyland. We figured we could just drive there and they would have a ticket office. Luckily, we bumped into a lovely chap named Kalechi who sorted us out. Kalechi, if you're listening to this podcast, thanks again. Kalechi, so, I just I just want to say also, I went to school with a guy named Kalechi uh, in kindergarten. Kalechi, if you're listening, God bless you. Uh, your Spider Man costume for Halloween when we were seven years old, I'll never forget it. Uh, you tore the ass out of it, and everybody saw your underpants, and I'll never forget it. Love you, Kalechi. <laughs> Holy crap. Holy crap. <laughs> That's true. All right, this true is story, an email. This is an email I from all it. of us. This is questions from a male birth control researcher. Um, I am a scientist currently working on developing male contraception. Right. There are several potential methods of male birth control being researched, and in this field, we often talk about which one might become the most popular among men. I've listed four different male birth control methods below, and would love to hear your thoughts on which one you'd prefer. Okay. Um. So, I mean, this is specifically because I talked about having a vasectomy. Would I have opted for just cut my dick instead. off just cut it off, just cut off. <laughs> Option one, i'm done with it off. anyway it does I'll barely work anymore dick removal. <laughs> just cut it off so here you go number one and just consider these and then we'll all discuss which one we'd like okay a gel that you apply to your shoulders at the start of each day i would rather contain... apply it to my scrotum but can you wait until i finish <laughs> the personal list? preference just, just wait <laughs> and similar to the oh sorry uh, the gel contains hormones that lower your sperm count to infertile levels it takes a few weeks to work so you got to build it up and then once you stop using the gel it takes a few weeks for the effect to wear off so like yeah. a nicotine so patch, basically right like thing. drinking mountain dew regularly option two a daily <laughs> pill that contains a drug lowering your sperm count to infertile levels same as above with the couple of weeks to start working couple of weeks to wear off so it's a daily pill a pill that you take 15 to 30 minutes before sex the pill contains a drug that prevents sperm from swimming and moving so they can't reach and fertilize the egg the effects wear off after about 24 hours a gel like material that is injected via minimally invasive surgery into the tube that sperm travel through during ejaculation. That would be the vas deferens, I believe. This blocks sperm from being ejaculated, and as a result, they die and are reabsorbed into the body. The gel liquefies and disappears after about a year. All of these methods are still in development. For the purposes of the question, you can assume that they're all highly effective, reversible, and have minimal side effects. Just I, for the purposes I love of this the question. idea of this gel, but also terrified of the idea of this gel. What if I'm in the club enjoying myself and somebody just like uh, impromptu starts giving me a massage with some gel that I'm not familiar with and all of a sudden I'm shooting blanks? For, for a week. Yeah, but still, I mean... It's unlikely that someone's going to sabotage you by making you <laughs> short-term infertile, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, but that's an... still. Okay, I mean, okay. that's my answer to everything things. to do with this. <laughs> still. Yeah, but still. <laughs> I mean, I think the pill that you take just before sex would be awkward. Yeah. But equally, um, a I'd daily that pill that you have to... The, the pill before sex would be inconvenient, I would say. I, I think it would be, but if you're in a relationship, a steady relationship, I could imagine you taking this daily pill just the way women do. Like, you know, women that are on the pill will be well aware that you have to take a pill every day. Sure. And you keep doing that yeah. and it stops your periods and you, you, you can't get pregnant. That's fine. A pill just before sex means you take it out with you. Yeah. You'd think, well, I'm going to get lucky, slam the pill down. And then I guess you'd have to say, oh, well, give it a bit. Hang on, baby. I yeah, just gotta just, take just keep, my infertility pill. Keep it hot there. Slow just, down. Just give me, Slow give me down. between 15 Takes and 30 half an minutes. Hour to, yeah. to start working. <laughs> So mm. I, I think that, and also maybe you've been drinking, you know, who knows what the the, the efficacy of it is going to be. Um, and also you would have to just be 100% sure. I'm just saying, if you need to not have sex right then and now, condom works just as well, even though uh, they suck to use. It's right there. Just whack a Johnny on. I think it'd be kind of fun though. Some of them smell crazy and like you can get ribbed ones and stuff. Like, Can like, I do all four? Yeah, I wouldn't, but sure. <laughs> 
this guy wants to become Baron. Baron von Fertile. I hate I this. I will be Baron von Neversperm. <laughs> <laughs> At your service. Yes. Do you have any uh, anti-fertility drugs I could snort while I'm on my way to your house? <laughs> I'm applying I... the gel right now, but I don't feel like it's it's adequate. <laughs> my plan to destroy my sperm and stop their swimming <laughs> continues unabated. The spam must be stopped. <laughs> Baron von never spam. <laughs> <laughs> the uh, ultimate super villain. <laughs> he just I will not impregnate any of you. My sperm must be stopped. <laughs> Fine. Uh, so, <laughs> we got some more. These are a couple of good ones. This one's None called... of you will have my babies. <laughs> no sperm for you. Out. I would make beautiful <laughs> children as well. Oh, fuck. Oh, this, is, uh, this one's titled Confessions of a Copper, meaning oh. police officer. Oh, this could uh, be good. I'm a 20-year-old I'm a PC investigator, which means I do the job of a detective, but none of the cool name benefits and for shit crimes <laughs> in the Met Police Fair Play. And I have a few stories I thought you would particularly enjoy. Oh, man, I've been watching That was a Met. great show. Yeah, it was oh, a good show. Oh, fuck, it's so good. I haven't watched all of it yet. Oh, there was oh just I finished a, it. There's a new one that was on last night. You're, you're yeah, not so done? Yeah, so I, I oh, watched, you watched five, that? and I've got one more. Um, oh, so, man. I interviewed a man for a relatively minor common assault in custody. I was doing overtime, didn't know much about the case, but love an interview, so couldn't resist. Before we start, I go through the usual rights and entitlements and notice the man I'm interviewing looks extremely nervous. I stop and tell him, don't worry mate, it's not like you've been nicked for murder, before we start recording. Big mistake. After a couple of seconds of silence, he begins to explain how he did 15 years for murder. Uh, luckily he was quite sound for a convicted murderer and we had a good laugh. Oh, <laughs> Sounds gosh. bizarre. Ooh. Uh, number two, charging an aggressive man for a scrap at a pub. He's so pissed off that we have to charge him in his cell instead of the sergeant's desk. As soon as the sergeant walks over to the cell, he makes a big mistake of not checking through the little the little door thing and opens the door to have a mound of Guinness powered shit launched to his shirt, oh my splattering God. him and the walls. <laughs> this led to having to get a team of trained officers to extract him from the cell the following oh. morning to go straight to court. It's like taking as he a would not flight stop. with Lewis. <laughs> Well, indeed, because he would not stop shitting, wanking, and pissing um, all over the cell. God almighty. Yeah. A friend of mine was involved in a warrant for a man involved in supplying drugs while on a neighborhood team. Having smashed down the door and flown in and nicked him, they start to conduct a search. Right across from the, his bedroom, they find a locked room, which also gets smashed in with hopes to find a stash of Class B drugs, only to find what could only be described as a shrine to M&Ms and M&Ms world. Statues, models, boxes of M&Ms from around the world that were all seized as proceeds of crime and apparently put to him an interview. So this guy had an M&M shrine. I'd always wondered who goes to the M&M store in Leicester Square. It's this guy. Jesus who, Christ. Who loves M&Ms that much? That's so That's strange. Too, I, when you said M&M, I thought you meant like the rapper. At, but then no. I realized quickly that actually you meant the candies. He means M&Ms. Jesus that's crazy. Christ. That's that wild. Crazy. Yeah, that is. That's weird for sure. This Christmas, when you give someone a gift, you want them to enjoy it immediately. There's no long setup or batteries required or assembly that makes anyone frustrated. There's so many reasons that I love Aura Frames, but honestly, like the quick setup might be my favorite. I set mine up out the box. You start by downloading the Aura app for free, which takes no time to get the frame ready. And then you can set it to your Wi-Fi and get pictures uploading immediately. All your grandparents have to do is unbox the frame and plug it in. Super simple. Wirecutter called it the best digital picture frame. It's such a great gift, even for the most tech unsavvy people in your life. That's me. I'm the most tech unsavvy in my whole life. I do love my aura frame. Like genuinely, we uh, we we gave them to to everyone. Um, so my sisters got one, my mum's got one, and we could just like share pictures of the kids to it. And that like that's grand, that's grandparent crack right there. You know what I mean? They love they're just that. like they're sitting there, and suddenly new pictures pop up, oh. and it's their grandkids. They're like, oh. Oh, look at you, look so lovely in their school uniform. And then you get a WhatsApp message or a Facebook message saying, just received this wonderful picture of my fabulous granddaughter. And they're happy and you're happy and it's minimal effort. It is. That's the way I put it, minimal effort. That's the key is the minimal effort. It's minimal Everybody loves effort. minimal effort. And it is it is genuinely very easy to set up. So uh, I, I, we love the Aura Frame. Thank you so much. Give the perfect gift this holiday season by visiting AuraFrames.com today and get $30 off their best-selling frames with the code TRIFLE. That's A-U-R-A frames.com promo code trifles. The frames sell out quickly though, so get yours before they're gone. Terms and conditions apply. On with the show.
Here's another one. This is titled, I am a poo scientist. Nice. Uh, hello, chaps. I wonder if this might be interesting. Since late 2020, I have been a poo scientist. Not the official job description. It turns out that COVID replicates in the gut lining just as happily as your throat lining because they're quite similar on a cellular level. This means that when you get COVID, you also shit COVID. Lots of it. So much ends up in municipal, municipal wastewater that a litre gathered at a sewage plant could be put through a PCR machine that amplifies up the RNA from the virus and lets us work backwards to estimate the number of cases in the population upstream. It doesn't wow. matter if you're asymptomatic, too lazy to report your tests, or an anti-vaxxer, your coronavirus ends up in my one litre milk bottle. Oh, God. man. I usually, I usually use a machine called an auto sampler at the sewage plant, which is basically a fridge with a hose out the back that takes little sips every 10 minutes Jesus. to give an average over 24 hours. That's really, when they, that's fucking interesting though, to be fair. But it's when gross, they break, but yeah. That's but what you call your penis. Isn't that, it? <laughs> little sips. Yeah, that uh, is actually, yeah. Yeah, that's when they break, name. the long ladle does the trick. At current, our freezer has 2,000 toilet water samples going back three years and we're frankly running out of space. Since we can detect it five days before symptoms show, we've accurately predicted a few outbreaks before hospitals got hit in some towns, which makes hauling up and down the M1 in a boiler suit and van full of brown bottles worth the hassle. I would also like to nominate my lab as the one place worse than a prison to receive a jugging. Much love, John. Best of luck, John. Holy shit, man. Yeah. That's, uh, that's pretty, boiling, that's pretty neat, actually. Water. That's neat. <clears throat> Gross, but uh, interesting. Oh man, I like that. I like those little quirky quirks of like cool ways to like solve um, problems. You know? Yeah. It's, it's really interesting. Yeah. Um, here, this is a weird one. You guys um, listening to this podcast will have to look this image up for yourself. Um, you'll see what I mean. So I'm going to read the email to you guys, first of all. The email says, long-term listener, blah, blah, blah. As you know, pretty much anyone can post songs on Spotify. This week, I came across a song called Astronaut in the Ocean by Abyss Walker and Sammy Slam Dance. The song and the artist are quite usual, but the song cover picture caught my eye. For a short period, I was certain that the two astronauts were Pyrian and Sips. Here is the image. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, right. that is us. That, okay. that is the image on Spotify. Yeah. That is wow. that is very funny. So these two guys really do look a lot like me. Yeah, it looks six. like AI art generated. Um, yeah. but yeah, it does. I think it is it is us. That looks like I us. Think it so is. nevertheless, this got me thinking. If you started a backup career as singers, yeah. what would your stage names be and what type of music would you sing? Um, holy crap. This is to all of us. So I think Sips might be able to get into Wu Tang. Yeah, I could right? easily. Yeah, I know all of their, <laughs> their back catalog, like the back of my hand. Oh, easy. And I, I could fill in for one of them. You could be like Scissor, no, not, right? not maybe all of them actually. The Jizza, the Rizza, the 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 Scissor. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah. Is that already a person? The, no, there's the Jizza and the Rizza. Yeah. But he could be the Scissor. I could sure. be the Scissor. I think scissor, there is yeah. a. I think there is a a girl singer though called Scissor. Well, let's have thing. a look. Um, uh, Wu Tang. No, oh, I mean, bearing in mind Wu Tang ain't nothing to fuck with. Let's have a look and see. Um, there's Rizza, the Jizza, the Inspector Deck, You God, Ghost Face Killer, Method Man, Raekwon, Master Killer, and Capadonna. And so the Capadonna Muesli might Man be the, as well. The mu the Muesli Man. Yeah, he's in there too. So in fact, it does, your name doesn't have to fit any kind. It doesn't of really rule need system. to. No, right. but it could be Scissor, like like it could be. Like, uh, like it could be C Z A after my real name, Scissor. Oh, True. Yeah. It doesn't have to be an that S. Makes you know what I mean? Yeah. Oh, it could even could be like that way. Sizzle. Sizzle. Because then it, it's even more of your Lil, own, Lil, your Lil, Lil Sizzle. I could, Lil, I could, Lil. I could, I could revive the 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 Lil uh, Rage fad. Remember? Mm. God. Yes. Lil <laughs> Rage. Not that. ever got away. Lil Bow Wow. You know? Lil Cease. I could be Lil Sizzle. Lil, They're still doing that. Lil, Lil Zan is that one? Like. I don't yeah. know. Either way, I, I hate the Lil thing. I Lil think Caesars. Stupid. You're a grown up. Why are you calling yourself Lil? That's ridiculous. Well, the only people like who it... could do it would be a child rapper. I don't want a fucking grown man telling me he's called call me Lil Lil Steve. It's like Lewis Lil was Steve. saying before. I call my my penis Lil Sips, but um, I call it that in the same way that Robin Hood would call Lil John. Lil John, Lil John's huge. I see. He's massive. So he's being ironical. Yeah. Uh, uh, here's one. This is an update. Do you remember we were talking about the très grande vitesse? Yes. Yes. So a lot of people have emailed in saying, if you think that's stupid, our train is called high speed one. Yeah. Uh, or high speed two. Right. So I I'm not saying that calling it very fast train is stupid. 
I'm saying that they get away with it because take on Vitesse sounds good, but it's essentially just the same as calling it very fast train, which is which we've done and it sounds suitably shit. But I'm just saying that because the French language sounds cool, they can get away with just calling it. What are we going to call it? Just call it very fast train. Job yeah, done. I think that I think yeah. the the acronym sounds good though. TGV. Yeah, TGV. Sounds, the, 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 the sounds yeah, it good. sounds great. Yeah. What's the Shinkansen mean? I don't know. That's the what one that in is. Japan. Jim is Hansen, the one the train I think that goes he's between <laughs> made uh, the Muppets. <laughs> he voiced originally voiced Kermit the Frog as well. Uh, just Shinkansen. a couple of factoids there for you. Shinkansen means new main line. Really? See, I it's like that's awful. <laughs> no. No, that sounds cool though. New main line. That's yeah. it, well, it's not brandable, is it? But it sounds cool. It sounds really cool. It to sounds like cool. Foreigners, yeah, it? It sound, yeah. Ooh. To foreigners, it sounds great. Yeah. Yeah. I'll take the Shinkansen. Yeah. It sounds exotic and interesting. But it just means new main line. I'll take the shit Hansen. This is. Uh, I remember we read a really disappointing email about someone. Someone had a pub in their house. This builder was surprised. This is a, a response to this. Um, <clears throat> a time when I was working as a timber farmer, making timber garages for people, we once got sent to a site where the customer had three brand new Porsches, a huge house, and their own health and wellness facility across the road. I asked my boss how the customer made their money, and he said the Captain customer- Tom, Is this Captain Tom's family? <laughs> These always Fuck sound so me. fake. Like The, the introduction <laughs> of the me. job always sounds like- you know, like, yeah, one summer I was working as an otter fluffer and um, I just happened to cross a garbage can that was open on the, you know what I mean? Like, it just said, <laughs> okay, like, whatever. <laughs> well, the boss replied that the customer is the head of a cult and that you should never bring it up to the customer. Right. My own curiosity, curiosity got the best of me. I looked up the area and found that customers were leaders of a former Australian cult called Universal Medicine, once branded the most socially dangerous cult in Australia, and had relocated to the UK to avoid prosecution. Here are some of the main points I picked up. The great irony of that. What? That we used to send all our criminals <laughs> to Australia, <laughs> and now they're fucking coming back here to escape. Look, if you've got money, you can come to the, the UK. That's been our open door policy for some time. How do, like, how I, do I don't you, want to get political, but we let any, any cunt with money can how be do as you get bad in as they so like much in. trouble in your own country, leave the country, and then get accepted into another one? I'm asking for a friend. Because of because of Britain. That's literally, we will Why take anyone. Why do they anyone. let them in? Like it, because they, we don't give a fuck. There if has got to have been you can like a warrant issued almost immediately. Did Half the fucking like, real estate in London is owned by Russian oligarchs. Yeah. It's insane. It's literally... Like a, new, it, a new tower block will come out and it'll be fucking empty in there yeah. because it's all owned by Russians and they use it as like vouchers to hide all their fucking massive wealth. It's, it's literally, literally what's happening. <laughs> That's so why you should vote for me at the next general election. <laughs> <laughs> The leader of the cult had two wives, and each one had one of the brand new Porsches. The leader claimed to be a reincarnation. Oh my god! That's, it's of... like when you got two kids on Christmas, you got to buy them the same thing. Yeah. It's like the... oh, I can't get this one a Porsche because the other one will be She's jealous. She's getting a Porsche. I want one too. Don't worry, I've got you each a Porsche. Well, the leader daddy, claims to be. I wanted a helicopter too. <laughs> That he claims Sorry. to be a reincarnation of Da Vinci, and one of the wives believes she is a reincarnation of Winston Churchill. Very uh, what the fuck? And they made their money by tricking old people into joining their health and wellness community. Then we'd wait for them to be on their deathbed, and then they tell them that if they if if the will does not go to the cult, God will send them to hell. So they essentially scammed millions out of dying old people. Uh, and the leader met his wife when he was twenty six, and she was thirteen, and he was her tennis coach. Nice. So there you go. Go ahead and look up universal medicine. They sound like a bunch of con artists. They, well, it sounds like that's exactly what they are, yeah. yeah. And we <sighs> let them uh, into the UK. Hell yeah. Get them in. Fuck. Why? Uh, so this is this uh, it's another email. I found out recently that the hit game, Euro Truck Simulator, yes. sells oh. in-game advertising to real truckers, um, or real trucking companies, due to their players' already established experience. Right. My question to you guys is, what games do you think have the best or worst transferable skills to real life? So this is an actual article, Games Radar. Real life trucking companies are trying to hire American truck simulator players with in-game ads. So there's billboards in American Truck Simulator yes. saying, come and get a real job as a truck driver if you like it, because we want you. Well, That's pretty I've, crazy. I mean, I've played a lot of video games in my time, and uh, I like to think of myself as a capable pilot, uh, surgeon, rocket scientist, uh, mailman, 
uh, sewage technician, power sandwich washer. artist, power washer, of course, city planner, uh, all these things. I, I pretty much could do them with my eyes closed now. I've clocked hundreds and hundreds of hours in these simulators. And um, yeah, I mean, if anybody wants to hire me, I'm, I'm, I'm available for birthdays, bar mitzvahs, whatever. I'm, I'm, I'm free. Let's go. More interesting to me is like the idea of ads in video games, like, right? Because that Ubisoft had a thing recently where there was like full screen pop-up ads coming in, I can't remember one of the games, and they were like, whoops, we turned it on by accident, lol. But it's, it's a thing that, you know, advertisers or, or games are always thinking about doing, you know, especially like free to play games or like if, if you can squeeze ads in there in a way that is, you know, fairly organic, that's like kind of, I don't mind like necessarily. Mm. Like, can I, it's, it's a, can I say something Tom. to you guys, which don't laugh at me because maybe I I'm promise. not aware of what's happening here, but okay. I've gone down a rabbit hole recently where I've been watching a lot of farming simulator stuff on YouTube. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Okay. Because there's been a lot of changes to the game and mods and stuff, and I'm interested. And I've been watching a couple of playthroughs and stuff. Every ad I get served is, uh, and they come up all the damn time for some reason, it's always, as an older man, how to, how to talk to a younger woman or pick up a what? younger woman. And I'm wondering wow. if it's because I'm watching farming simulator videos. <laughs> Maybe the algorithm just thinks that I'm really fucking lonely or something. Interesting. Like, it's so interesting. weird. I don't know why I'm getting served these. Like I, that I have, is that is interesting. I have no I wonder. I previous wonder. search. I like I, I'm honestly I have no previous like search history relating to anything like this. Like I, I, so, I don't think you'd need to have. I no. think it, I think I think it might literally just be certain topics. Are associated with a certain demographic, and then they're like, "What can we sell to these guys? How about how to how to pick up younger women?" Okay, but even it's more interesting, I'm not signed in to YouTube on the device that I'm watching this stuff on, so it's right. Like, but that, it's that's why it's probably more like, about the content. Oh, it's right, more about right. the content rather than you. It's like yeah. that's the kind of ad they stick on this these videos. I guess. Look, there's a there's a, a nice mailbag topic that is not about Australia. I'm not going to read any more Australia emails. Believe me, that is a topic. Let us know what kind of ads you're getting yeah. based on what you're watching. It's like the same, it's like, it, it's the same couple of ads and they just all the time, like, guys, you know what ladies don't like about, it's like, what is this ad? Like, I've never, you know, when you yeah. get the five seconds, you just skip it. Like, I don't even know what the rest of it is, but it's like some weird either dating or like pickup thing or or something and there's another one where this guy's like you don't have to be a sugar daddy to talk to a younger <laughs> woman or something i was like what the fuck is this i Jeez. saw this on um to on 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 subreddit and it was it, i found it my father soon after my mother died immediately began looking for a wife replacement he is surprisingly picky considering his age and temperament. He has, he has often made offhand remarks about women's looks, how they age, and their weight over the years. Today on Thanksgiving, so this is from last week, he again was complaining about how women in his area were very wrinkled and sun age. I told him he is no prize in the looks category and isn't one to talk. <laughs> oh, man. Obviously, he didn't agree. And then um, <laughs> the male ego is incredible. It, it's by remarkable. The way. It, is it is so remarkable. truly so remarkable. A bunch yeah. of people have replied. There's these great things. And so one of them is next post is my father is convinced he hasn't aged. Every time a celebrity his own age appears on TV, he comments <laughs> about their appearance oh. and asks, Do I look that old? <laughs> um, you look older, but if I said that, he would lose his mind. Yeah. Um, and there's this there's this I read this great one on here. It, it basically said my my father said to me, my my sixty year old father said to me, he prefers older women, and you know they assume how fucking older, old are we old, talking like, here, like, <laughs> like 65, 66, whatever, right? But he meant forty. I like him. That's what he I meant. Like him <laughs> I like him decrepit. I like him real old. Yeah, I like uh, I'm eighty seven myself, but I prefer older ladies, 35, 36. <laughs> <laughs> that makes no yeah. sense. That's so fucking funny, though. Holy shit. I mean, look, in these guys' defense, and I'm not trying to defend them, I'm just saying, culturally speaking, you see a lot more older men with younger women. Yeah, it's put but out the older men you see... It's fully possible. Yeah, it is, but the older men that you see with younger women are usually very rich. Or very famous. Uh, no, or very absolutely. famous, or really, really attractive old men. Right, yeah. It's but, one uh, of those it doesn't three. matter. 
It's the fantasy. It plants yeah. itself in people's heads. This is a possibility. And if I get lucky, this will yeah. happen to me. Fucking 75-year-old Jongi Tupperware from Renfrew, Ontario isn't dating a 20-year-old. <laughs> un unless <laughs> he's is that a real guy? fucking loaded. <laughs> No. Young, wee, young wee Tupperware. <laughs> Who the fuck is that? You guys I don't know, don't but know. I feel like I know him. You guys don't know Jean Guy Tupperware? Jean Guy Tupperware. He's like a French Canadian icon. You don't know him? <laughs> it's amazing oh that we don't. Gosh, well, wow, so, so crazy. He's a legend in his own lunchtime, and he's dating a 20 year old as well. I've my my dad was a real. This is a post from a random thread in, on Reddit. I know I shouldn't read these, but my dad was a real sweetheart. Uh, ninety nine percent of the time, but every once in a while he was a real ass. Right. About five years ago, my dad, seventy five at the time, said to my mum, also seventy five, who had decided to stop colouring her hair, "I married a brunette." <laughs> oh fuck off! Holy shit, man! I looked him up and down, rolled my eyes, and said, "So did she." Boom! Oh, Mic drop. Oh man! Look, my, uh, my my whole thing is, I apologise to Mrs. F constantly. She married a very different man to the one she's stuck with now. Yeah, I weighed. 35 pounds less than I do now. I had a full head of hair. I was a, a, a young buck. Um, I could, I, I was, I was cool. Yeah. I like to think I wasn't cool, but I like to think I had a bit of, bit of young, young man confidence and energy. Um, and, and now she's stuck with someone who just bought a steering wheel to play a truck driving video game. Like I am nothing but apologies. The male ego out there saying, oh, you know, don't be lucky to have me. I'm 65. She's 35. She should be lucky. The, the, these guys are deluded. That's all it is. It's delusion. It's classic male delusion. Just just get with the program, realize you are completely worthless. Whatever woman you're with, you're lucky to have her. God it's bless. amazing how people can look in the mirror, and I did this this morning, look in the mirror at my gray hair and wrinkles and think, oh, you know, I don't want to date a woman who has gray hair and wrinkles. <laughs> right, yeah. Yeah. It's like, it's while amazing I was staring how... at my giant gut, I was just thinking to myself, <laughs> gosh, I'd hate to date somebody who had a big gut. <laughs> like, yeah. like These my, women need uh... to look after themselves a little bit. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> Scratch his belly. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking hell. Well, it's everybody has an image of themselves, so I true, guess. So true, isn't it? So true. Um, here's a, this is a good one. Right. This is uh, from a lad in Norway. <clears throat> uh, my family owns a mountain cabin in Norway with no central heating. You have to chop wood and use a fireplace. Okay. No water. You get it from a river. No electricity beyond whatever batteries you bring with you or a flashlight. There's no fridge. They just have a cold cellar. Yeah. To get there, you have to walk about one and a half kilometers. It's about a one and a half kilometer drive from the nearest civilization, which is just a gas station. Yeah, I, I played it's, this video game before. I could do all this. Right. It's in the middle of nowhere. As, as middle of nowhere as you can reasonably get. You have to bring food with you, haul it up there on foot. My question is how long do you think you could stand living in such a place we usually vacation there for a week at a time but i've had friends who would love to stay for at least a month and even one that wouldn't mind living there permanently uh how long would you like to live there for uh, how long could you i don't think i could personally i i and i'm not i don't mind admitting it either i i'm i'm too accustomed to convenience and um you know comfort or whatever modern day comforts and convenience uh, air fryers unless internet. i was absolutely forced to live like that i feel like i probably could but i would not willingly do it so what's the longest you think you could last zero minutes zero day. okay i wouldn't That's i just wouldn't even f i wouldn't find it enjoyable to to do like i just set me up with like how this is happening is this for a video Are we do it as a challenge no like, like, this is this is if i had so to this, do it i would do it but uh, this is the triforce mail i wouldn't find it Lewis, enjoyable to people do people write like... in with questions and <laughs> this is the question how long could you stand to live in such a place um so they they send up they sign off the email by saying i predict that sips wouldn't want to be there for even a day no i wouldn't so very accurate well done um, I myself, in a similar fashion, would not want to fucking be there. It sounds terrible. Yeah. Uh, no offense. It's literally you're I'm selling a pretty, to me. I'm a simple person. Uh, like, uh, like I just, uh, you know, I want to watch farming sim videos or whatever. I, I, I need the internet and uh, yeah, I want the internet. I don't want to be warmth. too cold. I don't want to be too wanna hot be either. Yeah. And uh, it sounds miserable. Yeah. Really. It sounds miserable. Yeah, it just doesn't sound very fun. Lewis, 
Um, I I hate to do this. I wasn't paying attention when you said where. <laughs> fucking believe. That's why I asked that thing because I was hoping you'd say it again. No. Nope. Um, but you're not gonna. No. Nope. Okay. Well. So you get no answer from Lewis. Yeah. Sorry. Next email. <laughs> Lewis forgot uh, to pay attention to the question. Yeah. I don't normally ah, not pay attention. Uh, no, just, need, can you no, just... no, no need for excuses, please. We're moving on. Hi, I'm Dan. What's your opinion on this argument I'm having with my friends? What animal would win in a fight to the death? <laughs> for fuck's sake! Can you guys <laughs> find something better to do with your damn time? <laughs> like fuck. What animal would win cares? in a fight to the death? A hit between a hippo and a polar bear. Oh, for fuck's sake. Polar bear for sure. They're vicious as hell. Like a hippo. I, I know hippos have like a street cred or whatever, but a polar bear is ripping a hippo apart. No problem. Uh, I, I'm 100% with you. It's a polar bear. It's clearly a polar bear. They're fucking huge. Hippos, scary, big bites. Polar bears fight walruses. They fight other polar bears. Polar bears They're are hard like as fuck. starving all the time as well. Like they would, they they see a hippo and they're like, nothing is stopping me from tearing this thing apart. Yeah, it's a fucking, it's the polar bear every fucking other yeah, week. They're yeah. more agile. Bears are much more agile than you think. Yeah. They're fast. Yeah. Hippos are fast across ground. Probably they can outrun a man. They're, they're not slow creatures, but they look unwieldy and cumbersome. I feel like a hippo I'm and a polar bear probably polar be bear. same speed, honestly. It would be a hell of a fight though. Oof. Yeah, I would. Hell yeah, sorry, I wasn't following. Um, what what was the? What no, was don't worry saying? about it. It was. You so shut up. Fun. We're gonna slam this episode <laughs> closed. That's the end of this episode. <laughs> Piece of shit. Uh, Unbelievable. No, well, I mean, it's got to be, hasn't it? Yeah, it's, it's got obvious end. answer. Yeah, yeah that's yeah, yeah, obvious. Yeah, yeah. One, I, yeah. I totally. I mean, I I'd, vol I'd volunteer, guys. I, to I do that. Normally, I'm not uh, play devil's advocate, but because I wasn't <laughs> listening this time, I'm uh, just gonna have to I say. I was gonna have to agree. What what were you doing? I was trying a new jacket on. it. What were you? doing instead in the middle I of this was, recording he was staring at his gut and gray hairs in the mirror <laughs> <laughs> i was having like an existential <laughs> crisis yeah fucking hell did I was my, like, oh my god did my I two am dates last week find me even remotely attractive with all this <laughs> extra oh puppy fat and I'm my gray hairs <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, fucking hell. Well, thank you for all the emails this oh, week. We had a, a bursting mailbag. Listen, Australia, I make no apology for not wanting to come to your country again. Well, not had we a pop at Australians. Uh, we, I've not said you look, guys we, are evil. We did the research. Terrible people. We did the research live. It's too expensive. We cannot. It's go. too expensive. It's too expensive. It's too far. We can't I don't like the wildlife. Not in, End of not story. in the current. Financial climate. There's no way with inflation. Also, also no based on the emails, I couldn't even select which city to go to because everybody from their city says that the other cities are terrible and theirs is the best. It's it's pathetic. And quite frankly, I don't want to read any more about it. You can email in. It's going straight in the bin. It's going straight in the fucking bin. Unless you're a hot buxom woman who wants to email me pictures of yourself and beg me to come down there. Those I will read, but not on the podcast. Anyway, on that bombshell, the episode is over. Thank Goodbye. you, everybody. And keep those mails coming. Thank you. Bye. We love you. Bye. Bye. Goodbye. Bye.